Good morning, Stitchy people. Happy Friday, Floss Tube. Um, today is Friday. It's August 28th. <laughs> or at least by the time you're seeing this, it'll be Friday, August 28th. I'm filming this a little bit early uh, just because I had a day with no internet. And so, <laughs> so uh, I had some time to kill. <laughs> I figured I'd film a little bit earlier, get it out of the way. That way it can go up on time this week. I do apologize for not getting floss tube up last week. A lot of different things um, just sort of rolled into a ball so that I didn't end up filming. Um, I was not able to film at the time that I normally film. And then, as you know, the to-do list keeps getting longer and longer. And then if you follow my Instagram, you saw that I got like way down into the rabbit hole with ice dying this weekend. So that took up pretty much all of my time. <laughs> so I do apologize. I'm going to try to make sure that I, I actually post something for you every single week. Um, I wish that I had the community tab so that I could have given, you know, sent you all a message and let you know um, that Floss Tube wasn't coming last week. But you know, hopefully you didn't miss it too much. I hope you missed it a little bit, but hopefully not too much. I hope you weren't too disappointed. Um, but yeah, so floss tube this week. That does mean that there's going to be a little bit extra content this week, partly because I got a whole lot of stuff in the mail this past week. So what seems to be happening now, instead of packages arriving as they should arrive, um, you know, in a couple of days after being shipped somewhere from the U.S., um, what's happening is things seem to be getting sort of... Um, what's the word? They're being um, held hostage <laughs> at the Richmond Dispatch Center um, before they actually get to my town to be delivered to me. So things are sitting in Richmond for a day or two uh, before they're actually getting delivered, which didn't used to happen um, up until a few weeks ago. Um, so certain changes were made. I'm sure you've heard about it already. Um, and that seems to have made a, a major impact on, um, my personal mail delivery. Um, as far as the packages I'm sending out, those all seem to be getting delivered in a relatively timely manner. So something apparently has happened more locally, um, than maybe has happened in other areas. Um, Regardless, if you enjoy receiving packages or if you are like me and you're a small business owner and you need to send out packages, I encourage you to support the USPS and make sure that they do not, uh, we do not lose the USPS. Um, it's incredibly important to me both as a consumer and, and a business owner. Um, and I'm trying to do my part. Obviously, I do all my shipping through USPS. Um, so there's that. But I've also taken the time to purchase some additional stamps and things from USPS. Um, I encourage you to do that too. Even if you just want to get a book of post postcard stamps so that you can send some friends and family a little quick note, um, you know, do what you can to support the USPS because it's an important service. Um, we all need it, whether you realize how much you need it or not. Um, we all need the USPS. We need to be able to have that service to send things back and forth. Um, and we don't want to have to rely on U UPS and FedEx and DHL because not only are those services crazy expensive, but... Um, if you're like me and you have some experience with FedEx, they are not gentle with those packages. Like, not at all. <laughs> I just got, I started Home Fresh recently, so I guess we're going to have some, we're just going to have some chat for a little bit, and then we'll get into the cross-stitch. <laughs> so at uh, Rachel's suggestion, uh, Rachel Ray, over on YouTube, um, I started Home Fresh. I had been looking at a bunch of different meal services um, for a lot of reasons. Part of it is it's just meal planning doesn't work in my brain. Um, I don't know why this is a problem for me, but it is a problem. Um, so a service like HelloFresh or Home Chef or um, I've used Dinnerly and Freshly as well in the past. Um, something like that works really nicely for me because all I have to do is pick the recipes from the menu and then they send me all the stuff. And I don't have to think about, well, I want chicken this week. What do I want to go with chicken? You know, all this sort of stuff. Because what ends up happening when I go to the store, I don't know about you, but when I go to the store, I'll buy some proteins and I'll buy some random vegetables and I'll buy some starches and stuff like that. But I don't think about it in the context of I'm going to make salmon with asparagus and rice or I'm going to make chicken with green beans and corn or, you know, I don't think about it in a meal sense. So then I end up with a bunch of random ingredients that at some point never fit together. Um, so I like, I like the meal kits for that reason. I don't have to think about it. It's all, it's all together. Um, but I do find that the delivery process is very stressful for me because 
it's perishable food, especially because I like to get seafood and stuff that I can't get locally. So uh, Home Chef offers things like mahi-mahi. And um, I can get shrimp, but I don't tend to know what to buy at the grocery store. I don't want frozen shrimp. I want fresh shrimp. So anyway, so I'll get seafoods and stuff. And I know that this stuff is getting shipped from Georgia to me. So I know it's already got to be in the system for a day or two. And then they'll, all three boxes I've had have been a day later than they should have been. So in the back of my mind, I'm like, but this is fish sitting in a box in a warehouse. <laughs> like, how is this? How is this okay? Um, everything I've gotten has been totally fine. Um, all the meats have still been cold. Most of the time, the ice packs still have ice in them. Um, you know, they're still partly frozen. So as far as that goes, you know, Home Chef's doing everything they can. But it seems like FedEx is doing everything they can to not deliver things um, in a timely fashion. And then yesterday, my box was thrown onto my porch. I didn't see them throw it, but from the way it was laying, it had to have been thrown and it was crushed on one side and it was laying on the wrong side. It was not laying top up on my porch. And it was very obvious to me that they had come from the wrong side of the house to just kind of throw it in the direction of the porch because I was sitting here in my front room where I film, where I can see the street. And usually the FedEx truck drives right there. It stops, they bring the package but I saw no FedEx truck. So they came from the other side of the house and just kind of threw it at the porch. So that was lovely. Um, anyway, I'm sure you all needed to know that. <laughs> My point with that is that we should give the USPS some love um, because we don't want all of our packages to have to deal with FedEx. So. <laughs> I'm in a weird mood today, I guess. I guess I just feel, I feel very discombobulated uh, not having internet. And I just talked about this. I don't know if you've watched um, my Wooly Wednesday Nick cast, but I talked about this a little bit right at the beginning of that. And it's just, it's weird how much I rely on the internet. I never realized how much I rely on the internet until I wake up in the morning and the internet doesn't work. And then I find out that there's basically a citywide outage. Um, so there's just, there's no internet anywhere. Um, because under most circumstances, since I'm working from home, I would actually pack up my laptop and I would go to my brother's shop down the street because if I don't have power, if I don't have internet, a lot of times it's just me in my little area. And his shop is right next to the hospital and the post office and the, um, and city hall, all that sort of stuff. So basically the main part of the city um, of Hopewell where they would want to make sure the power stays on, he's right next to that. So he almost never loses power, internet, anything like that. All of the, the infrastructure stays stable for him because of where he's located. I'm not far from that, maybe a mile from that, but um, it is far enough away that we sometimes will lose power and stuff like that. So under normal circumstances, I just pick up my stuff and go sit at the shop and I would continue to work from home from the shop. Um, but there's no internet in Hopewell. So <laughs> it would not make any difference if I picked up my stuff and went and sat there all day. I would still have no internet. So, um, so yeah, so that's, that's what today is. And it's, you know, I have, I have a data plan on my phone, so I can obviously access the world. It's not like I'm completely cut off or anything, um, <laughs> even though it feels like it. So I can still message and I can still access my work email and all that sort of stuff. But the idea of actually trying to, do real work that requires the internet is pretty, uh, it's pretty much a no-go because my data plan is just not fast enough to do work at a real pace. So we're doing alternate things today. We're probably going to listen to some audiobooks. We're going to, we're filming Floss Tube. We're going to, we're going to work on the model stitch. <laughs> we're doing lots of things today that don't require internet. Um, and I'm, I'm a little ashamed of myself that it, requires so much thought for me to figure out what I can do when there's no internet. So, okay, so that's the life update that you didn't know you needed. Let's talk about what I'm listening to. So um, obviously later today I'll be listening to a lot because they don't expect the internet to be back up until probably two o'clock. That was the last estimate. They had already pushed it back two hours from the original estimate. So we'll see. We'll see how far it goes. Regardless, there will be some audiobook listening. I'm still listening to Joan Didion. Um, oh, crud. Slouching Toward Bethlehem. <laughs> I'm still listening to that one. 
Um, I've got about three hours left of it. I expect to actually finish that today. And I have I have picked up a few um, new audiobooks. Um, one of which, uh, and I'll try to put some some pictures up here of the audiobooks I'm listening to. So there's the Joan Didion one. Um, there is um, a book about anti-racism, and the title is escaping me right now, but it's been recommended by a number of folks, um, including Jenny Lawson, whom I love. If you have followed me for any length of time, you know that I love Jenny Lawson. She is She's my boo. Um, so yeah, she has the Fantastic Strange Lines book club. So um, I use that as a basis for getting some additional audiobooks. I also, she has an anti-racism uh, book reading list on uh, the, um, on her Nowhere Bookshop website as well. Um, so I'm using that as a reading list as well. So I, like I said, I can't remember the title. I also can't remember the, the author's name other than it's, I believe it's Ibram X something. I apologize. Like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a picture of the cover here so you know what I'm talking about. Um, I also picked up, based on one of the uh, Fantastic Strange Lane's previous month's book club picks. Um, there's this book called Wow No Thanks, which is the third book from an author who's I should have looked this stuff up. Okay, so we're just gonna we're gonna rely on the pictures here. But it's the third book from this particular author, um, and uh, it's a book of essays. And I decided rather than starting with Wow No Thanks, I'm going to start with the first book that she published, um, and I'll, I'll put that um, here as well. Uh, so that's probably going to be either the anti-racism book and or the, um, the essay book will be uh, my next listen after I finish the Joan Didion book. So I will be listening, actually listening to audiobooks very, very soon. Um, but the shows that I've been listening to, let me tell you. So first and foremost, I recently discovered Love Life on HBO Max. Um, don't let the title fool you. <laughs> um, it sounds like it would be this like goofy, silly, like super heteronormative whatever, especially, not especially because Anna Kendrick is in it, but if you know Anna Kendrick as an actress, she's a silly, goofy kind of actress. She does a lot of serious stuff, but she has that kind of like goofy oddball energy. So there's a certain kind of quirk that comes with an Anna Kendrick piece. Um, and so this is a series, um, I, I, as far as I know, it's gonna continue into another season, but they've only, they only have one season currently, it's 10 episodes um, on HBO Max. And the first couple episodes made me really feel like this was gonna be a silly, um, you know, girl meets boy, girl needs boy in her life to feel valid as a human being, and the entire show revolves around, you know, the, like I said, the heteronormative, you know, girl and guy have to be together, girl has no meaning in her life without the guy, or without a guy, um, and so the entire series is based on her having to find the, a better date or her partner or whatever. Very, very happy very, very excited to tell you that is not what the show is about. It starts out that way. It gives you the impression that that's where we're going. But then very quickly we learn that's not what it's really about. So it's really about your her total love life. It's about all of her relationships. It's not about just her relationships to men. It starts out that way and then we learn that that's only one piece of the puzzle. And the end of the show, and I'm not going to give it away, but the end of the show is fantastic. Um, and it, the, the whole thing reminds me a lot of the movie 500 Days of Summer. Um, if you've never heard of 500 Days of Summer, one of my favorite movies of all time, Zoe Deschanel and Joseph Gordon-Levitt star, and it's a love story that's not a love story. Um, and Joseph Gordon-Levitt, as the narrator, tells you that at the beginning of the movie. Um, and it's that love life is similar. It has a similar vein where it's it's a love it's a story about love, or a love life that's not exactly what you expect it to be. So worth a watch. And because it's ten episodes and they're only like thirty minutes long, it'll take you an afternoon. Just watch it. Watch it. If you don't have HBO Max, I'm not sure where you can find it. But you know, if you can get a free trial of HBO Max, do it. Do it. Um, especially because my next what I'm listening to, you have to check out. So, Love Life on HBO Max, absolutely check it out. Lovecraft Country on HBO Max, 
you must watch. Um, now, there's only been two episodes so far, but this is a story based in the 1950s. Primarily, the, um, the, the cast is primarily black because it focuses on um, a, a black family unit um, or, you know, friends and family group in the 1950s. Um, but it has this additional twist of magic and Lovecraft horror, and there's all this other stuff going on. So the premise is this general, this, um, the main character, whose name is Tick, um, has, he's come back from the Korean War. I don't remember how long he's been back from the Korean War, but he's a war veteran, so he has his, his issues. Uh, he comes back home because he learns that his father's disappeared and he has to go find his father. So he and his uncle and a friend of his from childhood go in search of his dad. Um, and they end up in Massachusetts um, in search of his dad and wackiness ensues. You'll have to watch it. I'm not going to give you clues. But one of the most interesting and artfully done and most fantastic things about this show is that there's all of the horror that you would expect of anything that involves H.P. Lovecraft, but more than that, this show uses the racism inherent in the 1950s and the things that, that people of color experienced in the 1950s, even in Massachusetts, it uses those things as part of the horror aspect of the show. And it does it so incredibly well. So you have, you have all this H.P. Lovecraft stuff, which is undeniably horrific and scary, but the scariest parts are the parts that really happened in real life and were part of American culture in the 1950s and in some places still part of the culture. Um, and that is so incredibly powerful. Um, it's disturbing and horrific and awful. And I will warn you, if you are, if you're triggered by, by racism, you, you may not be able to watch this show, but it uses that as such an artful tool to instill this kind of fear and horror in you. And it's just eye opening in so many ways. So watch it. The second episode is not as good. The first episode is fantastic. Um, as I keep watching the series, I'll let you know if it's worth continuing. Um, I think even if the series flops as a, as a whole, that first episode is a must watch for everybody. You have to watch it. So that's what I'm listening to. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else I can randomly chat about before we get to cross-stitching? <laughs> if you're still here, thank you. I appreciate you. <laughs> uh, I guess I'm feeling very disconnected. My husband is asleep. He's working night shift right now, so, um, so he's upstairs asleep and um, the world is quiet because there's no internet so and there's no TV so it just feels weird <laughs> so I guess that's why I'm so chatty today but anyway let's move on <clears throat> so putting the coffee down um, happy mail so I actually have some happy mail today. I got my my sticker club stickers from Zen Inspired Designs. So let me show you those. My stickers, let me show you them. So um, I get like one small and two mediums. And let's see, this is the small, just super cute. Be happy and smile. Are you gonna focus for me? No, yes, no. Uh, I guess that's as good as we're going to get today. The camera doesn't even work. Be happy and smile with like a rainbow background and stuff. It's super cute. This one is really fun. So this is like a holographic sticker. Maybe if I put it over my face, that might be too shiny. The camera does not like the shiny. Okay, well you get the idea. So it's like a Saturn type planet with the sunflower design and it's super shiny and holographic. I recently uh, learned from Zenspire Designs, um, she did a video on YouTube where she talked about where she gets her stickers, how she gets her stickers. So there may be mislaid pages stickers in my future. We'll have to see. Um, Cause now I know where she gets her stickers. She doesn't make the stickers herself. She makes all the designs herself, um, but she, she actually has the stickers printed and sent to her. So I can do that too. I just have to design the sticker. But first, coffee. This one is so incredibly appropriate. Why can I not? There we go. But first, coffee. Yeah, so that's definitely me. 
I love these stickers this week uh, or this month. And like I say, I'm going to be investigating making some of my own because they have really the place that she gets, um, it's sticker app, I think is the, the site that she gets her stickers from and they make really high quality stickers. Um, I know from having received a number of her stickers, um, that the, the ones that they, they produce are really, really nice. Um, so I'd like to have some of my own that I could give away and, you know, send in the mail and things like that. So I'm going to be working on that at some point in the future. As with all of the many various things that I'm working on, <laughs> the to-do list just keeps getting longer. Uh, okay, so that's all for happy mail. Um, the rest of my happy mail is like purchases, so that will all go in the purchase in the haul section. Um, so, happy mail, whips. So, still can't show you my whip. <laughs> Someday I'll be able to show you my whip. Um, but yeah. Uh, once once everything is said and done and I get the all clear from the designer, I will absolutely show you my whip. Uh, but I am going to put the progress meter, or maybe I'll put the progress meter over here. Somewhere in this general vicinity, you will see the progress meter. I'm, I'm getting so close. I am, I believe, as of filming, 78%. 78% finished with this design. That works out to, um, I have, I have completed over 6,000 stitches. I have a little bit more than 1,800 stitches left to go. So once I get done filming today, if there's still no internet, that's the next thing, next thing that's going to happen is that there's going to be some cross stitching. So, um, yeah. So hopefully I'll get a lot done today. Um, I actually got like 350 stitches yesterday evening, which surprised the heck out of me because I didn't start stitching until about seven o'clock and I stitched until 9, 30, 10 o'clock. Um, so that was a lot of stitches for me in that amount of time. So I was very excited. So we're actually less than 2K on the number of stitches left to be completed on this design. And I'm very, very excited. So I'm excited, but I'm also really ready to work on something else. Um, yeah, so. Uh, which reminds me, I had planned on telling you all about my my Season of Smalls um, stuff, but I just realized that I did not gather that stuff together to show you right now. So um, maybe over the weekend I will do a special video for Season of Smalls because I do want to, I want to have, I want to show you the kind of stuff I'm going to be working on before September 1st um, so that the first Friday after September 1st can just be an update about what I'm doing instead of after the fact telling you what I'm doing in September. So yeah, so maybe that'll be a separate video. I might even film that later today. I haven't completely gotten together all the stuff that I want to stitch. I still, there's still so many smalls, so many smalls. Um, I have a lot of ideas about what I'm going to do, but I need to finish pulling together all of the things. So there's a couple things that are already pulled together, like the, the Be Well and Stitch or that one that I got from Aaron to Martini Stitcher, that auction that I won. I can't remember the name of the pattern, but that is a complete set. So that's ready to go. And I want to do that. I want to kit up everything else that I'm planning on working on, at least for the first two weeks or so, um, so that I can show you all of that nifty stuff. And a lot of it is just pulling fabric at this point. I think I, if I don't have the flosses on hand, I'm going to use, I'm going to use my stash of flosses back here. Um, you know, so a lot of it, I'm as much as possible, I'm going to stitch from stash. So I have lots of fabric, which you will see in a few minutes, <laughs> lots and lots of fabric. I have all the fabric I could probably ever need for anything ever. Um, so I'm going to use fabric that I already have. I'm not going to buy new fabric. Um, I have bought some DMC. I might buy some more DMC if I feel like I need it, but as much as possible, I'm going to use stuff that I already have on hand to work on all these smalls. So that is, that is the thing. So, um, without getting any more into, <laughs> into plans, uh, let's talk about my purchases. So, um, as I said, I didn't purchase all of this stuff at one time. It just all showed up at one time. <laughs> so for weeks it was like, here's a piece of fabric, here's a piece of floss. And now it's like, here's all the stuff. Yeah. So let's talk first. One of the things I'm super excited about, super duper excited about, excuse me, my nose wants to be runny now. I finally got some Owl Forest embroidery kits. 
I have been wanting these since Heike at Stone Cold Coffee Crafts showed them on her channel like forever ago. It feels like it's been a year. Maybe it's only been a few months, but it feels like it's been forever. Um, so they, uh, the company is based in Russia. Um, it is significantly less expensive to just purchase directly from the company than it is to buy them, for, you know, for instance, off of Etsy. There's a huge markup from American sellers um, who purchased the stuff from Russia. And that makes sense. I mean, they, they're purchasing it at, at retail, essentially, and then they need to make money off of that. So I get that, but at the same time, why not just buy directly from the company? So um, they had been closed to international shipping for a long time, but at the beginning of the August, at the beginning of August, they reopened to ship to the U.S. So I took advantage, and I got, um, and you'll probably recognize these if you follow uh, Heike at Stonewall Coffee Crafts. So this one, <clears throat> and the names are not in English; they're in Russian. This one is Baba Yaga. So this is a different take on Bobby. I just realized it's not focused. Focus. Why is my camera so wonky today? There we go. So this is Baba Yaga. It's really, really gorgeous. And Heike has already completed this pattern. She's already completely stitched this. So I'm not going to go super detailed into what the kit includes other than to just kind of like flash it in front of you. Heike did um, unboxings of most of these. Um, like she's done, she's done unboxes of several Outforce embroidery kits. So if you really want to see like in full lengthy detail everything that comes in the kit, then check out her channel. But um, the kits do come with hand dyed floss. Which is really nice and they come with these um, pretty sturdy little bobbins and the bobbins actually have the uh, the symbols on them that the colors use you also get a themed needle minder and a needle why is it focus 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 I think it's just too shiny so there's a needle minder um, you get the pattern or actually this is that's an informational booklet. The pattern is in the bottom, which I'm not going to show you. And then you also get the call for fabric. So it's a nice little kit. I was surprised that they actually came in the boxes because I didn't think they were shipping the boxes to the U.S. Um, I thought that they were just doing soft packs. So I was very excited, even though one of my boxes is like seriously crushed. But, you know, what do you want from Russia? So <clears throat> that is that is Baba Yaga. And I apologize for my my um, cuticles they are awful I have a really hard time keeping my hands moisturized enough and I just realized I probably should have at least put a band-aid on that one finger so sorry <clears throat> I'll try not to put it in your face anymore the other kit I got is Kikimora so both of these are um, from I don't know if it's Russian specifically, but Eastern European folklore. Um, both of these characters are. Kikimora is um, a swamp witch, I think. I haven't actually looked up the story of Kikimora, but um, but I really love this pattern. She might actually be the frog princess, because you can see she's she's there. She looks a little princessy. She's got several frogs, some snails. Um, and I know Heike has this kit as well. I don't think she stitched this one up, but I'm pretty sure she unboxed it. Um, I'll just show you the stuff real quick. So again, we have we have our super cute little needle miter, which is not going to show on camera because it's all shiny. It's a dragonfly. If I can get it to focus. Okay, that's just not, camera's not working with me today. It's a dragonfly, just take my word for it. And then we get the flosses, the pretty, pretty flosses. And uh, this fabric is a little darker than for the other pattern, um, but we get the fabric, which is really nice. So both of these are linen fabrics. I think they're 28 count. <sighs> and um, the only thing I will say is that the pattern looks relatively, the paper pattern looks relatively difficult to follow. So what I might actually do is, um, excuse me. Additionally, purchase the patterns in PDF form so that even if I can't use them in Pattern Keeper, I can use them on my tablet to follow a 
little bit more easily than, um, than the paper pattern. What that also means is that if I have the PDF pattern for me to use, I can pass the stash on these patterns. So keep an eye out for that. That may happen in the future. Um, so yeah, so that's really exciting. Um, I have wanted some Al Forest embroidery kits for a long, long time. There's still a whole bunch that I want, uh, but I was trying to be a little bit frugal and not buy all of the things, which if you know me, that's difficult. I always want to buy all the things, so. That's that. Let's talk some, let's talk another pattern that I just recently got. So I got this pattern book. Um, I actually got several of these for the shop as well. Well, not several. I got I got a copy of this for the shop as well as the other two um, the other two installments. So this is Loose Feathers. Uh, they did three installments of this by Blackbird Designs. Let me hold it up for you. Loose Feathers, Blackbird Designs. So this is Summer. This is Part One. There's also Autumn, which is Part Two, and Winter, which is Part Three. Um, if these are not currently up in the shop. Um, by the time it's get, this gets posted, I will order more. Um, I ordered a limited number. Obviously, I wanted the summer copy for myself. <laughs> and the reason I wanted it is because of this pattern on the back. So, if you follow Michelle G. Bendy Stitchy, um, you may recall um, a sow that she's going to get involved in at some point called Damn Bird Sow. Um, it's Kismet, who is a friend of hers. Um, Diana? Deanna? Um, at It's Kismet, uh, who is also a floss tuber. Um, she wanted to stitch this, and I forget exactly what the story is. You'll have to check out Mendy Stitchy to find out what the story is. But regardless, there's a story behind this, and it became a sal, and it's called Damn Bird Sal. Um, and I just, once I heard about it, I was like, you know what, I absolutely have to get on on that. So, um, so I got this book. There's three patterns in this book. So it comes with the sampler on the front, uh, which is one of three parts. And then it comes with Dambird, which is actually a partridge box top or something like that. I forget what it's called. And then you also get this flower design down here, which is really nice. Um, but primarily, I want Dambird. Um, and so I got this specifically for Dambird. And I am actually going to stitch the Dambird in, um, I think, bright blues instead of this color combination here. So um, I'm going to. I'm gonna bump the colors up. I'm not gonna do them quite so um, muted and primitive. I'm gonna I'm gonna do them really bright. Um, so I'm super excited about that. I've got that pattern. Um, that will be. Let me see how big the pattern is. I think it's a little big to try to do for um, season of smalls. Let's see. Pattern size. It does not say. Oh, 98 by 65. So yeah, it's a little big for season of smalls, but maybe. Maybe sometime in September I'll start that um, because it doesn't seem like it would really take that long. It's it's under a hundred stitches, so that's small, right? <laughs> Maybe not. But anyway, um, so yeah, I want to get started on that pretty soon. Like I said, I do have some of these in the shop, uh, and if they're out, I will get more. Um, especially if you if you want them and find they're not in the shop, then uh, message me at uh, my email address down there and let me know that you're specifically looking for them and I will order them faster. Um, <clears throat> I generally place orders for new charts every other week or so, um, every three weeks, um, but if I know that folks are looking for something specific, I will order as quickly as I need to. So there's that. Um, let's see. I also, before I get to all of the threads and the fabrics and everything, um, you may recall a couple of weeks ago I talked about um, a Michelle Bendy Stitchy auction that I nearly won but didn't quite win because there were some some issues with Instagram um, but the the person who made the bags kindly very very kindly and generously um, decided to make bags for the other two folks that didn't get a chance to win because of the Instagram issue um, and that bag came in so I'm super super excited look how gorgeous this is she had additional fabric and she had the the will and ability to make additional bags um, so she did, and this is the fantastic bag that she made. It is gorgeous, gorgeous. And some of my smalls are definitely going to go in here while I'm working on them. Obviously, it has a zipper at the top here. It's got a nice white inner lining, and uh, this is her logo here, handmade by the Pineapple House. Um, I believe uh, the Pineapple House is Cassie. 
Um, so definitely check her out. It's a nice soft bag. Um, and I kind of like, as much as I like the squared off corners that um, 805 Stitcher and some of the other vinyl project bags have, I really kind of like the nice soft feel of this. Um, so it's got sort of a quilted kind of feel. Even though it's not stitched to be quilted, it has that nice, um, it must have some batting or something in between because it feels nice and soft but sturdy um, at the same time. It's not floppy, it's soft. So I like that a lot. Very, very happy with this bag. Super excited. So that is my bag from the, um, and I believe that was to benefit the Children's Rescue Coalition. Um, so yeah, so that's what I got for my donation, which was super awesome. It's always great to donate to a good cause, um, but it doesn't hurt if you get something spiffy in return. <laughs> so I was very happy to donate um, for that cause. Uh, regardless of the bag, I was very happy to donate for that cause. And I keep participating in the auctions, but I haven't won anything um, again so far. So we'll see. She's going to probably this week will be the last week of auctions for the, um, the Child Rescue Coalition. And I think if I remember, and this is from a, a live chat several weeks ago, but if I remember, I think she's going to be, Michelle Bendy Stitchy is going to be supporting NAMI in October. Um, and I will be all about that. Um, I'm actually considering offering some items to her for auction um, because I have stuff that I feel like people would like and might, you know, um, to bid, bid relatively decent money on. Um, but she has a much higher following than I do. So I feel like if I'm trying to do something for charity, it would probably be easier for me to just offer the items to her. Um, even if I ship them myself, um, it would be easier to offer the items to her so that she can get the coverage. Um, she can get that viewership and get more people involved and raise more money because that's the whole point. So NAMI means a lot to me because mental health is very important to me. Um, I have suffered from several mental health issues um, that I didn't realize I have suffered from until the last couple of years. Um, so understanding those, those issues that I have, those challenges that I face, and understanding that I don't have to be ashamed of it has been a huge thing for me. Um, and there are a lot of different people coming out more and more um, to speak about destigmatizing mental health um, and mental health care. And that's been, that's been a big deal for me. So let me not get, <laughs> it's been a good thing. Let me not get upset about it, but yeah. So NAMI is incredibly important to me. Um, the idea that, um, or supporting an organization that helps people understand that just because you have a mental health issue, it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. You face challenges that maybe other people don't face, but that doesn't make you bad, it doesn't make you wrong, it just means that you have some things you have to overcome. Um, and there shouldn't be a stigma around that, just like if you have a physical issue that prevents you from, from doing things, that's not your fault. It's not something that you should be ashamed of, it's something, it's a challenge that you face, it's something that you have to work around. Um, it's something that you have to learn to live with and learn to, to live in spite of, but it's not something that makes you inherently bad as a person. And I think that's something that, um, that people, it's a message that people don't get often enough that mental health is health and you have to take care of it. Just like you take care of your body, you have to take care of your mind and it doesn't make you a bad person if there's something wrong that needs help and you need help for it. So anyway. That's my spiel on that, so. But yeah, she has much bigger viewership, so I feel like the entire, the entire thing is better served if I just support her in, in her raising of money, if that makes any sense, so. And there's a kitty getting ready to get on top of some of the things that I want to show you. <laughs> She's sneaking over here. <laughs> Do you want the chair, Momo? You want the chair? Okay, you can sit in the chair. <laughs> she's, uh, oh no, she's not off camera. There she is. <laughs> what you doing, Momo? Yes. Mm hmm Okay. Momo is usually the one who gets all in the middle of things while I'm in the middle of filming. Oh, and now she's gonna go away. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> They've been incredibly active this morning. So anyway, 
let's move on to the next thing. So um, this is this is really cool. I don't know if now is the best time to talk since I was just getting slightly emotional. I'm going to try not to get emotional over this. So in October, I'm going to do a high tea start. Um, and I have lots of high tea thoughts that I will discuss in a later video. But um, in October, uh, I'm going to do a high tea start of a piece that is uh, in honor of my mother. Um, in memory of her and I decided um, I don't know if you remember last time I talked about how much she loves swans um, and she did have this huge collection of tiny swan figurines and stuff that when I was growing up there were swans everywhere there was swan artwork there was swan figurines there was just swans everywhere mom loves swans so um, I decided that for my very special high tea start in October uh, which happens to be her birthday month, that I also needed a very special project bag, but I couldn't find already made project bags that had a fabric that I really loved because um, I wanted something with swans on it. I wanted something really pretty that fit my style, all this sort of stuff. There's lots of bags with swans, not a lot of project bags with swans, um, and of those project bags that had swans on them, none of the fabrics were really calling to me. So I went on Spoonflower. I actually went on Joanne's first, but I went on Spoonflower and found a fabric that I fell in love with. And I'm going to attempt to make my own project bag. Now I have made zipper bags in the past, um, and I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna try to not to steal somebody's design. It won't be exactly like this, but I'm probably gonna try to make a bag similar to this, where it's a soft bag without the vinyl front, um, with a zipper. Um, I'm better at make at putting the zipper on the top, um, so it may be a top load zipper bag. Regardless, I'm going to do a soft kind of quilty feeling bag like this, I think, or more like this. Um, but yeah, I found this fabulous fabric. Let me show it. Let me show you it. So, boom. Look at that. Look at those swans. Aren't these gorgeous? Now, I will say, Spoonflower is one of those things, you can order like any image you want, but you kind of have to be cognizant that you might get something not quite what you expected. So um, this fabric is actually, I don't know if you can tell from the top, this fabric is, it's this design I should say, is meant to be um, a printed on fabric pattern for a skirt or two skirts. So this is part of the design. Let me open this up. And this is the other part of the design. So you can actually make um, two different skirts out of this, or maybe one skirt if you want. It's meant to be a, a kid's skirt because it's pretty small. So um, I thought it was really cool because it's got built in the inner liner fabric and the outer bag pattern, which I thought was really awesome. And you can see here, see that's the pattern for the skirt. So this tells you how you're supposed to cut the fabric and how you're supposed to assemble it so that you ultimately get a skirt out of it, which is great. That's fantastic and everything. What I wasn't thrilled about, I bought two yards of this, um, but the pattern is only on this section of the fabric. So I don't know if you can tell. I keep moving it to the wrong side. So this is not two yards of fabric in this direction, or maybe it is. I don't know. I probably should measure it. But there's this, and then there's the back side. And that's great, but then look, all of this is white fabric, just plain white fabric um, on both ends. So I paid for two yards of fabric, but I got like a yard of white <laughs> and I thought I was getting two yards of pattern. So I'm really glad that I bought two yards instead of one yard. Um, I figured I only really needed one yard of the pattern to make a bag, but I got extra just in case and I'm glad I did because I don't know I don't know what I would have done if I'd had, so I'm, I'm not terribly happy considering, I'm not happy with that. I love the pattern, um, but I'm not happy with the fact that I have so much white fabric when I expected the entire thing to be printed. So I don't know if that's a thing I need to message them about or what. Um, I don't know if that's me just not knowing how the pattern was going to show up. Um, to be fair, they don't give you a good idea of how the pattern is going to be printed on a piece of fabric. Um, so I wasn't exactly sure what I was getting. Um, I do probably have plenty of fabric for two or maybe three project bags. So um, it's really not that bad in the long run. And I can use that white fabric. I could dye it. It's just cotton fabric. 
Um, so I can, I can do all kinds of things with the fabric. I'm just kind of disappointed that I don't have more printed fabric. So I don't know if any of you all have experience with spoon flower and ordering fabrics through them. If you do, give me a heads up and let me know, does that sound normal to you to get random white when you expect the whole thing to be printed? Um, cause I really would have expected them to tile it. Um, but I don't know, maybe, maybe because of the way the design is, um, they wouldn't tile it because then you'd get pieces that you couldn't actually use to make a skirt and maybe that's the whole point. Um, so maybe it's just me not, not understanding how spoon flower works. Regardless, I'm in love with this pattern. Um, I think this is going to make super cute bags. I am a little sad that the fabric is very, very thin, but that's probably because of my fabric choice. I did go with the least expensive cotton fabric. Um, so I probably could have picked better fabric. Um, but you know what, if I love the way this bag looks, but I'm unhappy with the fabric, I can always purchase a different, I can purchase this print on a different fabric if I want to, if I want to spend more money. So we'll see how that goes, but I'm, I'm still super, super, super excited. This is going to be a fantastic project bag. Um, if I, if I manage to make, I don't know why I keep rubbing on it, sorry. <laughs> if I manage to make more than the one that I want specifically, I may actually um, either offer these up for sale in the Etsy shop if I think they're high enough quality, or I may um, may do some giveaways in the future. But yeah, this is, I think this is the perfect special fabric to make a perfect special bag for my perfect special project for my mom. So I'm really, really happy about that. I'm very, very excited. <clears throat> so that's it for the accoutrement and kits and things like that. Now I just have a bunch of fiber and a bunch of fabric and it's a lot. So this is going to take a few minutes. <laughs> oh my goodness. And I just remembered something else I was going to mention. Oh, the giveaway, the 250 subscriber giveaway. I should have said this at the beginning of the video. Um, sorry to put it 45 minutes in. Um, so I am gonna draw those names. I'm gonna post that as a separate video on Saturday this week. Um, that way, cause I, I remembered that I didn't, or at least I don't think I did, um, put a, a time limit on the original video. So I, I think I just assumed everybody would think it was a week. So I wanted to give you all two full weeks to get your, um, to get your comments in and that sort of stuff. So um, rather than, than cutting that off so that I can put it in this video, I will do a separate drawing video on Saturday. So look for that. Um, and yeah, so look for that. I think there was something else I was gonna say too. And now I can't remember. So yeah, Saturday might be your video for the, not only the drawing, but also the September smalls. So that might be a thing. I'll try to remember that. <laughs> I'm sure I'll remember the other thing I was going to say probably 10 minutes after I finish filming because that's how that works. So um, I bought some more stuff from Hand Dyed by Rolanda because I can't not buy from Hand Dyed by Rolanda. Um, she does, um, I guess she does this every month. This is the first time I actually caught it. Um, she does a floss of the month um, where you get a pack of five cotton flosses, hand dyed flosses, um, random assortment, random colors, whatever. Um, so I finally found that, or I finally caught that on time to be able to order it this week. And these are the flosses that came. Now I will say, considering I usually purchase hand dyed by Rolanda, why will it, I guess it's the shiny is keeping it from, focus. there we go. Um, since I usually am all about the bright, fabulous, variegated flosses. I'm slightly disappointed just because this is, it's a lot of cream and gray. Um, so it's not, it's not what I normally would have purchased for myself. So I'm a little disappointed that this is the floss of the month. Um, that doesn't mean I won't purchase floss of the month again. Um, now if I get a second pack that's too similar to this, I probably won't buy it after that. But, um, but yeah, so that's, that's what I got for this, uh, the floss of the month that she did this month. And this is not a club, this is an individual purchase. You have to catch it um, in her shop when she has them available, which is very limited. Okay, there we go. I guess the issue is that it's, that the camera's focusing on what's behind me and not what I'm showing. Anyway, um, and since um, Rolanda offers free shipping on orders of $35 or more, I had to make sure that I spent $35. <laughs> 
Um, cause yeah, I'm, you know, if you follow Heike at Stone Cold Coffee Crafts, she'll always tell you she would rather buy more stuff and get free shipping versus paying for shipping. Um, and I can't disagree with that because I'm going to pay however much in shipping. I could get that much stuff and then get the free shipping. I, I see no downside here. So, um, I finally took the opportunity to get some, some, tr uh, not treasure braid, some sulky petites to try because I keep hearing all kinds of awesome things about sulkies. So, I get that to focus. So as you can see, it says that one strand of sulky equals two strands of floss. So these are, these are all cottons, um, different colors of cotton. And these are sized so that if I wanted to do um, two strands over however many strands of fabric, um, I would only need one strand of Sulky for that. So I am really excited to try that. I may use these on some of the smalls that I'm getting ready to do. Um, especially any smalls where I'm going to just do whatever colors I feel like instead of whatever's charted. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really excited. And I got a range of colors. I got some Christmassy ones. Christmassy ones. And I got, this one is the Brights, I think. See those colors, and then this one is uh, fall autumn colors, which will be really nice. So yeah, super happy. Um, I thought it was probably better to invest, you know, a few bucks this way on some sulkies versus jumping right in and getting the giant cases off of Amazon. Um, they're relatively inexpensive for for a full set. Um, or at least a big old set, but if you don't know if you're going to like them or not, it's better, in my opinion, not to buy all of the things. Just buy some of the things and see if you want more of that. Um, and if I do really like this, I may actually get some of these to do Pandemic. We'll see. We'll see. Um, I also got some Kathy Floss. Um, these are actually... Momo is... I don't know. Momo has had too much coffee. <laughs> I don't know what mom was doing today. Um, so these are actually one from uh, a Sunday morning posting. Um, I do have a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of re-dye, floss re-dyes coming. Um, but I think this week is the week that Kathy's working on the re-dyes. So I probably won't get those till next week or the week after. Um, I bought a bunch. Um, because even though I'm thinking about using Sulky for Pandemic, <laughs> I bought, um, there are two different colorways she had available for re-dye this past month, and I bought uh, four 50-yard skeins of each because I think I might do Pandemic in both of those colors. So one of them is Decadence, and the other is Sangria, and they're both purples. Um, Decadence is a much, much deeper purple, and Sangria is a lighter um, pinky purple. And I think it might be, I was, I at first I really wanted Decadence to do the entire thing in, but then when I saw the pictures on the re-dye page, I was like, that's maybe darker than I wanted to go. But the Sangria was gorgeous, but I didn't want to fully commit to Sangria, so I got, I got half of what I need for both. <laughs> so I figure what I'll probably end up doing once I get down to Pandemic is I will probably do a situation where I kind of graduate the, excuse me, graduate the colors. So start with the dark decadence on the outside and then move towards sangria in the center. I may even use a third color in the very center. Um, I'll have to, once I get all the pieces and parts and actually sit down to look at pandemic and kind of evaluate how the pattern flows, I'll decide exactly how I'm going to do that. But anyway, that's for a future date. What I have right now, um, this I believe, uh, it doesn't have a name on it, so I believe this is one of the ice dyes. Um, that she did a couple of weeks ago, <clears throat> which is really cool looking. So it's much, it's muted tones, which I hadn't expected. I thought that they were a little bit more intense than they are in real life, but it's really nice. And this is something that I'm actually thinking about experimenting with. Oh, that's what I was going to tell you. <clears throat> I mentioned that um, over the weekend I did a ton, a ton of dyeing, lots and lots of dyeing. Um, and I am going to tell you about that in much more detail in another video, but I have way too much stuff to talk to you about this time to, to bring that in because then we'll be here for two hours. And I'd rather make sure I have another video for you in the future than sit here for two hours. So um, I will talk about all that dyeing and I'll show it all to you later. Um, but I'm hoping at some point to actually to do some uh, floss dyeing as well. 
and yarn. Uh, pretty much anything that's cotton I can do with the dyeing method that I prefer. So um, I'm hoping to try that in the future. These others are all regular, yeah, these are all regular um, uh, dyeing process. So these will probably be available for future re-dyes. Though I'm not sure I need any more than what I have right here. So this one is called Desert Night, which is nice. It's a dark blue into a gray brown there. Desert Night. So these are all nice colorways, but they're not, I don't know, I'm just not as jazzed about them, seeing them in person, as I was seeing them online. So I'm not really sure. Um, I might, it's possible that I just grabbed everything I could, but I remember them being more vibrant colors when I saw them online, so I don't know. Um, <clears throat> this one is called Aztec, which is a nice sort of coffee latte kind of color like caramel into a really creamy coffee sort of situation. This one I like a lot. This one's called Earthwalker. This is really pretty. So this is dark green into um, yellow orange and reddish orange. It's coming off much more red. Um, it has a lot of red in it, but it's, it's a much more like burnt orange color than it is a red, uh, but that's really nice. I like that a lot. It's a nice fall color. So those are the the cotton flosses that I have right now from Kathy at Dying for Cross Stitch. Um, like I said, I will have lots, lots more, but it'll probably be a couple weeks um, before I have those to show you. So, but those are really nice. I'm I'm looking forward to diving into my stash of Kathy flosses to figure out what I'm going to use for for season of smalls. It's going to be really fun. So now fabric. And this is gonna be a few minutes. <laughs> I have so much fabric, y'all. I have no idea how I ended up with so much fabric all at one time. Um, I get, I think it just all, I bought it at all different times and I think it just all shipped at one time or it, it all arrived at one time. We talked about that. Anyway, um, the first thing I'm really, really excited about is the fact that I, um, because of Rachel Ray, Rachel at Rachel Ray, um, she uh, discovered this uh, fabric dyer on Etsy who is in Richmond, Virginia. So talk about local. Uh, Richmond is about 30 miles north of where I live. Um, and for some people that seems like a really far distance, um, but that's, that's like everyday driving distance for me because um, I actually work in Richmond. So when I'm in the office, um, I'm, I'm up in Richmond. So I drive 30 to 45 minutes every single day back and forth um, to go to work when I have to go to the office which is why I am not mad at working from home because <laughs> that saves me uh, up to two hours a day in driving, um, not having to go to work to the office. So that's nice. So anyway, um, a Richmond Dyer is super local to me and it's super exciting to be able to support somebody that local to me. It's the first time I've been able to support a shop, any kind of shop um, for cross stitch or um, for knitting supplies that is that close to me. So I was very, very excited. And um, they they don't have a lot of fabrics up because they're pretty new uh, as far as I know. I don't know their full backstory, but I know that, um, that they must be fairly new and small dyers um, because they put up lots of just a few fabrics at a time. They sell out quickly. So when I checked the other day and happened to see that they had some fantastic fabrics, I was like, yes, please. I shouldn't have spent the money but they're Richmond local and I didn't know that those fabrics would still be there the next time I checked the shop. So I jumped on them. They also had one fabric, which I did not purchase because they probably had a linen of it at some point or, a, or an even weave at some point, but the only fabric left with that dye color was, um, was a 14 count Ada. And I wasn't going to buy a 14 count Ada as much as I loved the color, which they named unicorn sneeze. <laughs> How can you not buy a fabric called Unicorn Sneeze? It's a gorgeous, gorgeous fabric. If I can find a picture of it, um, I will I will stick a picture of it up here because it was gorgeous colorway, um, fantastic colorway. But I didn't want it on Ada, so I didn't buy that. But I did find two other pieces because they also have free shipping, so I bought enough for free shipping. <laughs> they had two other pieces that I really, really loved. So um, the, uh, the fabric dyer is called Lappin Loops Luscious Hand-Dyed Linen. 
Um, so they are on Etsy. Uh, I will make sure to update the Link Haven so that uh, so that you get that link. Um, and like I said, they're they're relatively local to me, which is super exciting. So this colorway, um, this is a 28 count linen, and this colorway is called Gray Cloaks, and it's really really pretty. Let me just open this up for you. So it's a very thin linen, you can see, which is not unusual for linens. Um, I don't think this is a cashel, but it might be. Cashel has a little bit more heft to it than this, but anyway, it's a 28 count linen and in a colorway they call gray cloaks. How gorgeous is that? Now, I will say from very recent personal experience, getting gray is hard. <laughs> so I'm incredibly impressed. Um, with the job that they've done here um, and I'm super excited to work with that. I have no idea what's going to go on this fabric uh, especially because the texture of this linen is not my favorite um, but I love this color so something gorgeous will go on this color um, but yeah so that is the first one. The second one this is a much um, this is a linen that I much more like the texture of. This is a 32 count and they call this colorway brown coat Gray cloaks and brown coats. <laughs> Look at that. How gorgeous. How gorgeous. It's a fantastic brick red sort of color. It's going to be great for a primitive piece. Or a modern piece that I want to make appear to be primitive in an ironic way. <laughs> but yeah, that colorway is fantastic. Um, and this fabric feels really nice. Um, there are some types of linen that I just don't like, and I haven't figured out exactly what types of linen those are so that I can make sure I'm not buying those. Um, but I will say, even though this feels this feels very similar to um, the Picture This Plus fabrics that I've gotten, which are usually on 28 cashel, so I might actually like this better once I get it stretched to work on it. But it's a, it's a little stiff um, as part of it. So this is softer. This is much more... Um, the type of linen that I prefer to work with when I work with linen. I generally prefer even weaves to linen, but when I work with linen, this is a nice one, but this color, I love this color. I just absolutely fell in love with this color. And when I realized that Unicorn Sneeze was not um, a, on a fabric that I would want, Momo, <laughs> why? Why do you need to be? <laughs> I don't want her to get her black fur all over my white fabric. <laughs> what are you doing, silly? Okay. Um, but yeah, when I realized that Unicorn Sneeze was not available on a fabric that I wanted, I went looking through the rest of their store and I decided on the gray cloaks to go with this. Because this I was like, yes, I don't know what I'm going to put on it, but I need this color. <laughs> so yeah, I'm like I said, I'm super happy to be able to support a very local dyer. Uh, it's incredibly exciting. If you're anywhere near uh, Virginia, um, or Richmond especially, um, take a look at them. The shipping was incredibly fast. I got this the same day. I got a bunch of other stuff that came from farther away that was shipped um, much sooner or much uh, earlier. So yeah, so very nice. Lap and loops on Etsy. Um, let's see, I have some from all the dyers this week. Um, I have a couple of pieces from Misty. Um, she recently did, um, I don't know that she necessarily specifically does her stuff on Sundays anymore. Um, she kind of lets you know in her albums when she's going to post again. Um, it's kind of up in the air these days. Um, but she recently did a posting where she had a bunch of half yards of stuff. And I took advantage of um, getting a couple of half yards of some colorways that I thought would be good just to have on hand. Um, so this one is Witch's Brew which at one point she didn't think she was going to do anymore because um, it's a difficult colorway to to replicate. And this is, let me see, this is a 28 count Lugana. And as I said, it's a half yard. And you can tell this is really light. Um, so it's not the most, uh, it's not the best representative of this colorway just because it's really, really light. But it is on Lugana, and um, as I've mentioned before, dyes don't take as well to Lugana, or at least the dyeing methods that a lot of folks use 
um, the colors don't take as intensely to look on it as they do to to other fabrics. In my personal dyeing adventures, I've I've found that I can get really intense colors on Lucana. So, just saying, <laughs> just saying. But yeah, so it's a really muted colorway. I think that's going to be really nice for a bunch of different projects, but I don't know what projects yet. Um, I just, I saw it and it was reasonably priced and I was like, eh, let me just buy it. Now this one, this one is gorgeous. Um, I have, this is her Galaxy colorway and this is on 32 count Opal Lugana. And I believe I have a piece of Galaxy, but I think it's on either Ada or Linen. Um, so when I saw that there was a half yard of Galaxy on Lugana, I was like, yes, please. Yes, please. So, pretty. This one has, I don't know if it's coming off on camera because I can't see the fabric and myself at the same time. Uh, this one has a lot more sort of green in it. Um, it's coming off really blue on camera. But I got this one specifically because I felt like it had more of the sort of nebulous green that I like a lot. Um, so I got that. There was one that had more purple or something in it that I almost me pleased, but then I changed my mind and decided on this one because this one feels this one feels a little bit more galaxy to me than the other one did, and it's not it's not coming off well on camera. But like in this area over here, this is sort of a um, an arboreal green, arboreal um, like an aurora borealis is what I'm trying to say, um, an aurora green. So it has these nice sort of models that look very um, nebula cloud to me, which I liked a lot. So, so I got those. Let me just make sure I'm not folding the fabric so it's going to wrinkle really badly. So I got those two from Mystic. That's all I got from Mystic. Uh, now my nose is going to be all runny. And I also got a few fabrics from Kathy at Dying for Cross Stitch. Um, I'm going to do these in order of fabric count. So this first piece um, is, I think most of these are, three of these I believe are ice dyed, um, which if you know me, I love ice dyed fabrics. Um, this is a 28 count Monaco, which I have never purchased Monaco before. This is my very first time. And gorgeous. Gorgeous. I love that there's so many different colors in here. So we've got some bright pinks and some darker almost maroons and some purples and some blues. There's some fantastic stuff happening here. And she's got gorgeous pooling and puddling and all this kind of stuff. She does a fantastic job with ice dyes. Really, really gorgeous. And I love the softness that the, the even weave gives it. So Monica is an, Monaco is an even weave fabric. I need to look up the fabric content um, because this is actually much thicker feeling than even Lugana um, and it is it has a texture more like canvas material so Lugana is very soft compared to this and Jobelin is very smooth compared to Lugana so this compared to Jobelin is almost like canvas <laughs> so it's really thick kind of stiff um, I'm curious to see what it's going to be like working on this. Um, because it's an even weave, it should be nice and, um, and easy to work on, but it is a really kind of like, it has that more stiff sort of texture like, um, like Ada has almost. Um, even without the, uh, the sizing that you get in Ada, it has that kind of like tough cotton texture. So I'll have to see if it has a higher um, cotton content than some of the other fabrics, because it feels like it might have based on the texture. So that's a 28 count Monaco ice dyed. This is a 32 count Lugana. So if I could if I could have you somehow feel through the camera this compared to this. So even though Lugana is a pretty thick fabric, um, it is softer and has much more um, drape than that fabric than the Monaco does. So this is also ice dyed. You can see that this is much uh, much more muted. Similar colorways. I believe I ordered these the same week, but that's really nice. It'd be lovely with something floral. I probably 
probably shouldn't take the time to fold these up while I'm on camera, but if I don't fold them up now, then it's going to be murder when I get off the camera. <laughs> and then the next two pieces I have are both 40 count linens. Um, I don't normally buy 40 count, but these are really gorgeous and I got kind of, um, I got kind of carried away. <laughs> as you do um, so this is a gorgeous green and it's not co it's coming off darker on camera than it is in person but it is a gorgeous opal it's a 40 count opal linen and this is going to make some fantastic Christmas ornaments teeny tiny Christmas ornaments so I'm very excited about that And last but not least, um, I have an ice dyed 40 count linen, which is also opal. This one is gorgeous. Gorgeous. And I will say, to get these ice dyes, you have to be so fast. So fast. They go s almost as fast as the, uh, as the flosses do on a Sunday. Look how pretty that is. So pretty. This is going to make something fantastic also. So, very, very happy with all of Kathy's fabrics, as usual. She does some, I don't know how she, like what her process is for ice dyeing, but she gets some fantastic watercolor type splash. Um, fantastic. And I have gotten some of these effects, but not to the extent that she does. Um, so yeah, she is an artist, that is for certain. Okay, so last but not least, I have a huge stack of fabric from Brandy at Be Stitch Me. <laughs> some of these are um, fabric of the month, um, and some of these are um, sort of special requests, um, and then some of these I got from Friday Fight Night. <laughs> so we have a huge mix here. So on top here, I have the August um, fabric of the month. So if you haven't gotten yours yet and you don't want to be spoiled, look away for a couple minutes. Um, so my first one, I get the I get the standard um, club on Joe Boleyn, and then I get the neutral club on linen. So um, this first colorway is called Lotus, and it's a really gorgeous pale color. I should probably not give so many descriptions if I'm trying to save you. Um, and actually, on camera, you can't see the color at all, but um, it's a really, really nice light color. It's going to be great for um, for some neutrals and stuff. Um, probably also some Christmas ornaments. But we'll see. Um, so it's a gorgeous, gorgeous fabric. I will say, if you've got... Um, uh, this colorway in a fabric that is not an even weave, um, it is a very different color. Um, I saw Rachel's um, when hers came in and hers is, um, is definitely not nearly so muted. <laughs> so if you're worried about that, um, you won't get so muted if you, got, if you got something that's not even weave. So this one is a 32 count linen. The other one was a 32 count Jobelin. And this colorway is called the Mocha. So this is the neutral. And this is really, really nice. It's a fantastic neutral fabric. And that color is gonna, this is gonna be really nice for, um, I might actually, once I get to doing some of those um, animal stacks from Plum Street Samplers, I think this would be a great color for those samplers. I think that'd be awesome. So that is Mocha. So those are both August fabric of the month. Um, the next four, <laughs> are from a recent Friday night fight night. <laughs> These are actually all the same colorway. Um, I don't know what overtook me. Um, I think part of it was I saw some orphan fabrics and I didn't want fabrics to be orphans. So I adopted several fabrics. <laughs> um, the first two, I believe, yeah, the first two are um, Jobel and this the first one is uh, 28 count versus 32 count. And this colorway is called Awakening. And you'll see it's very different um, on different pieces of fabric. So this is on the 28 count Jobelin, which is really nice. 
It is coming off relatively true to color. It's a little bit more brown on camera. It's got more green in it in person. But it is sort of an army uh, camo green, um, which I find really nice. So it's got those that brown tinge and that sort of thing in it. Um, very, very nice. Great for some kind of foresty woodland sort of situation. Oops, stuff is sliding. This is the 32 count Awakening, and you'll see this is actually very different, even though it's the same colorway. So this is much lighter. There's a lot more white in this one, and it also has less brown, more green. So many possibilities with both of these. I kind of like that it looks, there's sort of like leaf-like patterns here. So that would be really great also for very natural things. But this is, like I said, it's a it's closer to a, um, a pale green rather than the army camo green-brown, even though it's the same colorway. Um, this is a 32 count linen, and obviously it's gonna look different because it's linen versus jobelin, but it's also a different concentration of the colors. And that's very nice. I like that this end is really pale and this end is really dark. So it gives you some options if you're going to do small pieces. That's really nice. And I like the texture of this linen. I think it's because it's 32 count. Um, 32 count tends to be a little bit more, a little softer and a little thicker than, um, than 28 count. And last but not least, um, for the Friday Night Fight Nights, this is a 32 count opal linen. And this one is really, I love the opal in this one. Really, really pretty. Now this might be a great fabric for um, maybe a Mirabilia or a Nora Corbett that is forest or woodland based. Um, I think there's one that Heike has shown on her channel. Um, I can't remember the title of it, but I think there's there's one that would be really, really nice on this fabric if I were to ever do a Nora Corbett or a Mirabilia. Um, the chances of that actually happening are fairly slim. Um, the I find the artwork to be really pretty, but it's just not my style, and I don't... I never feel like it's something that I would want to stitch, so... Okay. Two more pieces of fabric, two more, and then we're nearly done. <laughs> um, so this was this was actually an orphan, I think. It was either an orphan fabric or um, something that uh, that somebody me pleased, but then didn't pay for. And so um, I was like, may I have that, please? Um, so this colorway is called Phoenix. It is a 25 count opal Lugana, and I am so in love with this fabric. Let me just show you. This, I mean, I don't know how this could have been orphaned because this is fantabulous. Fantabulous. Look at this. Gorgeous. Gorgeousness. Phoenix is such the perfect name for this color. You can even see, it's closer to this side, there's almost like a bird face. Let me see if I can point it out. Right about here. Can you see? It's like a bird face. It's like a phoenix right there. <laughs> so this is this is fantastic I love 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 this piece of fabric um, because it's a 25 count I will probably find a pattern that I can stitch over one instead of over two um, so and that's stitching over one uh, square instead of over two squares which is what you normally do on uh, on most even weave fabrics but um, but I just, I don't see stitching over two because that would make the pattern really huge. So that would make it the equivalent of like 12 and a half count Ada, um, which would be a huge, huge piece. So if I did it over one on 25 count, that would make it a more reasonable size. But it's so pretty. This is what I'm trying to, so pretty. So many possibilities. I don't know if I'll even do, I mean, if I, again, if I were, if I were a big fan of Mirabilia, there are several Mirabilia patterns that would be perfect on this fabric, but probably not gonna do a Mirabilia. 
So I'm not sure what I will stitch on that, but I want to find something fantastic for it. And this is the last piece of fabric for today. Um, this is a piece that I requested specifically from uh, Brandy. Um, this colorway is called Storm. Excuse me, and this is a half yard of 32 count Joblin. So, let me. <laughs> this is a lot of fabric. Yeah. Fabric. Oh my gosh, it's bigger than the screen. It's so big. And you can see the modeling. I was afraid you wouldn't be able to because it's it's really, really subtle. But you can see the modeling. But overall, I mean it's a it's a nice um it's a nice base, I think. Actually, you can see it really well if I hold it back here. It won't focus, but you can see. Focus. Okay. Anyway, um I thought this would be a really fantastic base. Can you focus on my face? It's just going to be fuzzy. Um, there we go. Uh, I thought this would be a really nice base for pandemic um, because I wanted something. I didn't want just plain fabric. I didn't want to get just, you know, the magic grid or something like that. But I wanted something that was really going to let me showcase whatever colors I wanted to use, especially something that would work really well with the purples that I was thinking I would use. And I think I'll have to do a floss toss, obviously, but I think this is going to work really well with those purple flosses that I purchased from Kathy. I think that's going to be really nice. Um, so that that's almost 100% going to be my pandemic fabric, this piece will be. And as you can see, that's a really generous cut of fabric. <laughs> that's a lot, a lot of fabric. So, um, because if I'm going to spend that much time doing... Um, a long dog sampler of that size and magnitude. I want it. I want the um, the stitching to be the star of the show. Um, I love gorgeous fabric. You know me. Um, I'm a huge fan of gorgeous fabric, but um, I want the fabric to be beautiful and accentuate the stitching, not to make the stitching disappear. So, and that's a complicated enough design that uh, that I think it warrants nice fabric, but fabric that's gonna accentuate it instead of overpowering it so I think this is going to be this is going to be awesome um no idea how I'm going to frame this up for stitching <laughs> I might actually have to do the thing I hate which is put it on like an 11 by 11 and just move it as I need to I mean that pattern's going to take forever anyway so it's going to be one of those things that or I'll have to get a scroll um which I'm thinking about doing because um, my Elon lap stand is designed to work with lock scroll scroll rods um, made by Artisan's de Artisan Designs and I am looking at purchasing um, possibly the whatever the step above the deluxe kit is. Um, the biggest kit with scroll rods that they sell as a group it comes with three different sizes of sidebars and three different lengths of scroll rods and but I think I need to also purchase a 30 inch scroll rod set um, because when I start um, Gamer Nouveau that piece of fabric I think is 28 inches wide so I will need I will need a 30 inch scroll rod to accommodate the 28 inches so that's gonna be an investment um, because as, as worthwhile as their products are, getting the scroll rods is relatively expensive. I think the, the big set is $150 by itself, and then the 30-inch scroll rod pack is another $45. So it's going to be totally worth it in the long run, um, but I have to stop buying fabric long enough to save up money for it. So <laughs> choices. It's all about choices and priorities, right? Okay. So, um, as I mentioned a little while ago, and it has been a little while, um, I will definitely be doing the drawing for those 250 subscriber giveaways. I will do those, um, and hopefully I'll be posting that Saturday. So right after, the day after you see this video, um, the winner should go up. Um, I will also be giving you some information on my Season of Small plans, and I do want to do that before the next Floss Tube Friday, so that'll probably, those two things will probably be probably be all in one special edition video that I post over the weekend. So there's that. Um, and that's it for now. Um, I have a feeling that the next floss tube is not going to have any haul because <laughs> the mail is just not showing up. Um, 
but yeah, so I have packages, and at this point, I'm just like, I don't know where my packages are, because the uh, UPS, USPS informed delivery will tell me I'm supposed to get six packages, to, six packages today. I might get four of those, and then it stops telling me where the packages are. So uh, I'm currently waiting on a shipment of Dinky Dyes that uh, was supposed to be here two days ago, I think, um, and it's arriving late. Um, so yeah, I have to see where that is. But yeah, so that actually brings me to one final bit of business before I let you go, uh, a quick shop update. So as I mentioned, the uh, loose feathers patterns from uh, Blackbird Designs, I will have some of those in the shop. If they are gone and you want them, let me know. Um, I will order more. Um, also, we are right at the tail end of August, so you still have a couple days left to get the August Dinky Dye Silk Floss Pack. Um, if you purchase in the Etsy shop, then it is a one-time purchase. You get that month's floss pack, and that is the only floss pack you will get unless you buy more in the future. Uh, but they are available as one-shots through the Etsy shop. Now, if you're interested in getting an automatic subscription, email me with your information. Um, mainly, I need your, uh, your PayPal connected email address uh, and a mailing address unless you, um, actually, yeah, give me your mailing address. Um, and make sure that your PayPal is updated with the correct email address. So what I do with that is that I um, invoice you on the first of every month, and as long as you pay by the fifth, you will get your floss pack shipped out to you by the fifth of the month um, for whatever the new colorway is. So this is August silk pack. You still got a couple days left to get this out of the Etsy shop. Um, if you sign up before, if you sign up for a recurring shipment. Um, before the end of um, August, then I will ship this out to you and then bill you again on September 1st if you would like. So available in the Etsy shop, also available um, as a subscription through emailing me. Um, I'm working on getting automatic emails to be sent out a few days before you get billed as well as, you know, uh, thank you for subscribing and all that sort of stuff. I'm working on those things. Um, I'm only one person and there's so many things to do, <laughs> so I'm doing my best, um, but I'm working on those things. Um, and to give you a quick preview, since um, by the next uh, next time I do floss tube, these will be already up in the Etsy shop. This is September's Silk of the Month pack. I should probably take these out at some point. Um, so this is September's pack. We've got um, a sort of dark gray blue as well as three different other blues. It's interesting how these um, these four packs are coming together because I'm just going through, I'm going through the Dinky Dyes catalog um, in an alphabetical form. So um, alphabetical based on the color name of the silk. So it just so happens that most of the time the four that I pick next in the alphabet happen to coordinate, which is kind of awesome. So September is these nice icy, um, sort of reminiscent of winter colors, uh, which, which I really, really love. So these will be available in the Etsy shop starting September 1st. If you are already subscribed to, um, to the Floss of the Month Club um, through PayPal invoicing, then as long as you pay your, your invoice on the first of the month, you will be getting this shipped out to you by the 5th. So, and I do have, I do have some regular recurring subscribers, which is awesome. If you want to be a regular recurring subscriber to the Dinky Dyes Collect the Catalog Floss of the Month Club or Silk of the Month Club, um, like I said, just hit me up with that email below. At some point soon, I will be setting up uh, a subscription form that you can fill out so that it's, um, it's a little bit more streamlined than just sending me an email. But uh, currently you can sign up with me just by giving me your PayPal email and a current mailing address and I can send that to you. So, okay guys, I think that's it. Uh, this has been a long one. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I have enjoyed showing you all my stuff and chatting with you for a bit. Um, it's been fun and I hope that you've had fun too. Um, I hope you're having a great day. Um, if you are out of internet like I am, I hope you're finding fun stuff to do that you maybe didn't think about doing while you still had internet. <laughs> Um, and other than that, I hope you're staying safe and you're staying healthy and you're staying well. And uh, I will see you again next time. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great one.